compañeros, buenas tardes, buenas tardes, aquí su vidor Víctor Bugarín. ¿Cómo están ustedes? Aquí estamos con mi gran amigo Todd. Toddy, como dicen los filipinos, ¿cómo estás, Toddy? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Toddy Dixon. ¿Cómo estás, amigo Todd? Good to be here. Good to be here. Yes, sir. Acabamos de llegar de la, del barbecue de Jeff Hotspeth, Cedar Creek. Yes. Good turnout. Good turnout. 1,100 or so people and good family, friendship, fellowship. Jeff's a good person. Beautiful farm. I learned a lot when I was up there. A lot of the, I think it's either, probably the nicest farm in the States. Yes, I believe it is. Uh, I tried to pick up a few things while I was there that we would put into our our farm going forward. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> we had an interview with um, Karen E. Smith. And, yeah. Well, actually, with, with uh, um, um, Bobby Fairchild, and then Carol kind of you know, walked into, into the interview, and that's then I right. put him in the interview. That's right. That was a, that's gonna be a classic interview. Yes, yeah, sir. I don't think we've ever had, never been in an interview with Carol and him together. Okay. Yeah, so I was excited about that. Um, what do you think of all the people that the barbecue? They were nice, very opening, uh, beautiful place, beautiful day. Yeah. It was a beautiful day, and then everybody come and went, and and you could tell they were really there and to have a good time and to hang out. Okay. It went well. It went very well. Um. Where are you from? Uh, my name's Todd. I live in El Dorado, Arkansas. Okay. Been here all my life. Same place. And uh, was your daddy a cocker? Yes, sir. My daddy was a cocker. Um, we've known each other for... Well, ten, tenemos conociéndonos 25 años. Um, known for what, 22 years now? Yeah, probably 22 years. 22 yeah. years. The Bayou Club days when it was rolling. Cuando, cuando yeah. estaba... El Bayou, este, este, abierto, Bayou, Sunset, Copper right. State. Right. Y era, era uno de los partidos muy, muy duro. Um, and then we've been friends for, you know, yeah. throughout the years. For, That's say. right. Um, and then I, I started getting my products last year. What, yes, what have you been thinking about products? I've had very good success with the babies with this coxin medicine. Um, I just used it like you told me to do. And they're very, very healthy this year. What? Very, very healthy. Did you use the 5500 and the false? Yes, sir. On the one with the false, that was the one I took up to 0.33 instead of 0.25. ¿Qué lo usa con, uh, le pone 0.33 en vez de 0.25? And you liked it? Yes, yes. It, helps, very, with, it helps with joints and, and... Yes. Well, it's just everything about phosphorus is good for the interior of a chicken from the hand-eye coordination to the joints to the muscle tissue. Phosphorus is good to help break down the nutrients in the feed. It's just a good product. Yeah. It, you know, for us, it's, it's, it helps us digest, I mean, so the body can absorb all the vitamins That's right. a lot better, right? Right. That's correct. Okay. Um, so your daddy with Cocker? Yes. Yeah, right here on this very farm. Uh, where mine, mine and my wife's house sits now it used to be our tie cord yard. And where my baby chicken room is is where mine and my daddy's cock house was. And we just had a big open barn back in them days and cock boxes in one corner. And uh, we used to play the gaff back years ago because everybody when, did. When it was legal. Yeah, back when it was legal. Yes. And what kind of chickens you still had? Now, my daddy, he had bullicos, doms. Oh, no. Yes, yes, he did. They were um, not fancy. He crossed them with Murphy. And uh, they were double-handed. And that's all they had. They was not the best chickens in the world. But back then, all the old men, what they had, well, they lived and died with it. You know, if, if some of the old men around here had hatches, they lived and died with hatches. Uh, so they had hatches for the 30, yeah, for the 40, whole years? Yeah, for their whole life. Nobody went off years ago. Whatever your little community had, the same people had the same chickens the whole time. Some of the guys that uh, was older than me still actually have the same chickens they had back then, whether they're the best or wow. whether they're not the best. Yeah. It's, things have changed. You know, me and you friends with Ibel, Charlie Ibel. Right, that's right. And Charlie told me he got his grays. There were two brothers, each five of them grays at mm -hmm. some pit. And they would never let this grays out. That's right. And then um, he said that, one of the, the brothers, when they were had the show, and after the show, they, they would 
sacrifice the rooster, the one that were right, killed. right. And I guess they slit it, they slit the throat and they threw it in the trash. Right. It was still alive, and Ibel got it. That's right. Well, they had actually the story goes that they had took the heels off of him, and they thought he was done, finished, right. dead. Well, they throwed him in what they used to call that pile. And uh, the rooster kind of come back too. Well, I don't know if it's Carol or Rudy got the rooster and brought him home. Charlie, and, that. and then that's how the Ibel Gray started 50 years ago. And matter of fact, Charlie's still doing well with them today. And and and, the, and, and, and it all matter, goes back. And the birds to that, were mad. Yeah, up. that's exactly right. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And, and and that was back then. You know, you you, right. you got raised with the family. That's right. You your stayed, dad, and then your daddy stayed with the family, and then that, you got the, you inherited the family. That, that's a correct. Yes, sir. And now I went from one fucking side to the way... Way to the, the other, other side, side, you know. Um, but back years ago, a lot of people that had the good chickens, they would not allow them out. So it wasn't like you could drive up to this guy's house who's doing all the winning and say, hey, I want to buy a rooster and six hens. Back then, nobody sold nothing. So basically what you had is what you had to work with. Wow. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It was what it was. Whereas today's society, you can literally buy good chickens if you know where to go and how to breed them. Or you them can and, buy good stories. Huh? Or you can buy good stories. Or you can buy name brand stories. Yes, sir. And, and I, I, I mean, I'm not going to get in trouble with this, but me voy a poner en problemas. I think 90% of the trios sold through Facebook and through the cell phone, right, are junk. Average or below average, because I try to be a positive person. Um, and you, they're right. crossed. That's right. Crossed. Flock, flock bread. Flock bread. Right. You, right. Un gallo con 20 gallinas, just completely chicken peddlers. Even the ones that weren't chicken peddlers are now chicken peddlers. Right. And uh, I think it's it's it's... It's horrible, but then I see my the you know the white white guy side, where he's got you know 100 Mexicans calling him every day for trios, and right. he's only got 10 trios, and they're right. offering him triple the bunny, two thousand two thousand dollars, three thousand, thirty five hundred dollars for a trio, right. and they don't have him. And what do they do? Well, you go get them. You go get them. Yeah. Right. So I I, I think it's, and I think people deep down they know. Right. And but they, they they're trying to and, reach out and get that hope. And, and that, they don't care. Right. right. Uh, because, I mean, we talked about this yesterday. We had a little short video, right? Right. Yep. No, I had a short video, and you was being a Mexican trying to go get you some whites and blues and piles. And I was telling you, you need to stick with solid chickens. Yeah. I believe in the older I've gotten, I done got old and fat, and, and I've, I'm a lot more wise as I've gotten older and fat. Solid chickens win tournaments. And the off-color chickens are some of the other lineages we'll talk about later. There'll be one good one out of every eight, but the other seven are average or below average was kind of the discussion we had. Now, there, like if you had eight off-color chickens, there's always that one that shows out. Yeah. Well, everybody wants to talk about that one. When I was a kid, a lot of the old men had like old non-cutting hatch roosters. Well, one would win... Two hours, right? And they'd talk about that one, but they wouldn't tell you about the other three that lost that same weekend. But, you know. But even now, I mean, you can find solid, solid hash Kelso families, hash yes. Kelso yellow yes. egg race. Yes. Or te puedes buscar este, puedes encontrar este hash Kelso and giros, Albanis, solid, solid. Lines. Well, that's what I've done over the last three, four, and five years myself. I had to learn a valuable lesson, and. I got caught two different times in the fad of everybody wants to buy this. Well, we got a beautiful farm, so we're. Dice que eh, vamos, vamos a hacer la 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 tres la vamos a hacer de las dos modos. Vamos a hacer parte de inglés y parte de español. Este dice que que él también le pasaba a mí a él, él igual también él tenía líneas sólidas y y la gente quería asiles y pintos y fue compré compró asiles y pintos. You got you got spangles and and right. and, and Ke Kelso spangles and yeah. ACOs. Yeah, and, and you got a, you got the right ones. You got them from from right. from uh, Mr. Wallace. Wallace. Yes, you know you know. And and but here was our problem: 
in 2015, 2017, 2018, Beto and Michael whooped everybody in Mexico. Él, él le vendía a Beto Barbas y a Michael de Tijuana, y lo que fue 2015, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, 15, 17, 18, they were on top of the world. 15, 16 too? No, they, I think 16, they had somebody else's chickens. 15, 17, 18, three years? Yeah, there was three years out of four. Tres días de cuatro años. Right. Excepcional. Eh, dominando, muy dominante, con los, esos asiles uh, coloraditos en limonados. Lemonhaco, Asios? Yes. The Kim Spangle and yeah. Lemonhaco? No, they all come red and Lemonhaco. Uh, todos salieron rojos este, limonados. And you did really, really good. That's right. When they were dark, we did really, really good. But the more we bred, and this goes back to any cross of any version of anybody's chickens, the more you breed, if they get different and inconsistent, you need to call a timeout, stop what you're doing, and try to figure out what went wrong because that's what's happened to us over the last two or three years. Well, I had went and got American fowl and brought in. Well, my thinking was I'll go half American and I'll go half ACIL. Well, when the ACIL started getting real inconsistent, they went way down on us where they were healthy. They were beautiful. They would do good at home. They were very gentle. They were two, 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 three, two, four, perfect. But when you put them in the car, they were no bueno. Dice que, que aquí se miraban muy bien, configuración perfecta, mansitos, sanos. Pero este, cuando empezó a, a salir más y más limonados, este, se empezó a perderlos la línea. Dice que cuando tengas una línea y, y algo sale diferente y bajas tu porcentaje, tienes que parar y tener cuidado y ver qué pasó. So what happened? Well, what had happened was we was doing what we always do. I have got customers that come every year, and they had got a few Americans, a few ACs. Well, the ACs didn't do no good, and the Americans did good. Well, I got to hauling them. The ACs didn't do no good, and then the Americans got on a big run. Well, I was calling back home and saying, hey, we're doing this, and this is not doing this, and this is doing that. Well, what, what are we doing wrong? Well, it was just when it went down on us, it went down. Dice Inconsistent que is what it was. Era muy inconsciente, este, inconsistente los, los, los asiles empezaron a perder, a perder más y más, y los navajeros empezaron a ganar más y más. Entonces, you, I mean, you gave away a lot of roosters, right? 408. Regaló 408 gallos regalados. Bominos. You didn't sell them. Bominos. And you gave them away. I killed. The, there was a few that was like missing one toenail or missing one tail feather. And I usually give them to the local guys that come help me like work on Sunday. I'd say, come help me and we'll do this. And then yeah, I'll pay you money. No, 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 no. I said, get your rooster. Well, me and my wife every year, we'll take the leftovers and play the leftovers. We sell the number ones. You can come to my farm, go si, out there. Es, es siempre ven todo lo todo lo bueno y, y, y lo demás este lo que dejan eh, colo, es con lo que juega juega eh, se va a se divierte pero dice que por los 408 gallos los regaló you came away yeah, give porque away. no no tienen un buen porcentaje That's that takes a lot of boss it does and we killed the brood stock that was our biggest is half of our system went down but I'm thankful that I had already acquired the solid American hatching gray and the round head and radios and had done started. Yeah, ya, ya, ya había empezado a, a tener familia también de los, los, um, los radios, los hatches, los giros. Right. Este, hatch radio. Hatch radio. Kelso, uh, hatch radio. Uh, gray radio. Gray and uh, round That's right. That's right, because I breed the green legged gray rooster. To the radio pullets, and I breed the green legged gray rooster to the roundhead pullets. Entonces, I got all giros, hatches, cabeza ronda, y este. Um, gray, hatch, roundhead. Radio, radio, y radio. Roundhead. I got four lineas. Tiene cuatro lineas, y es de esa forma que empezaron a ganar. But we, we talked about it, and we saw that with me. Right. We were at Jeff's place. Right. Yeah. I, I, let, let, me, let me tell the story. So we're at Jeff's place. And I'm telling you what I've been through and have completely overhauled my breeding program the last three years. And I've gone back to solid American honest roosters with style and cut. Que, and, se, que se fue, que ya ahorita se fue por, por lo americano, 
este, líneas sólidas con corte y casta. Ok. So we ride and we talk and we talk and we're together all day. And I'm telling you, no more fads for me, no more aces for me, no more off-color chickens for que, me, que, no more... Que, que ya, para, ya, no, ya nada de, de asiles, ni, no más. ni colores raros, nada, ya estuvo. Solid American roosters that can win is all I will have the rest of my life. Gallos sólidos que pueden ganar con corte y casta. And a 21-year-old white guy walks up and said, I got white, black... Gray blue crosses, and I made my own chicken. And Victor Bougarine, you kept getting happy and happy. And I'm like, come, come, on, come on, come on. The, the kid was respectful, and he was, well, from, he was a good kid. I, mean, I was watching the Mexican and you that wanted the white, blue, black. Estaba un muchacho y este, y dije que hizo una familia de blancos y le agregó giro. Negro y hat y leapers. It's like had five lines in four one lines, chicken. Four lines. Because one of the hatches was spangled and one of the hatches was red. It's yeah. two different hatch families. And I thought you were going to like ride home with the kid. And I'm telling you, come on. Yo que me puse bien emocionado porque ya quiero blanco yo también yo. No bueno. No bueno. No bueno, Victor. But we were saying that every Mexican does that. Eh, but I, and I'll be honest with you. I've got some of my Mexican amigos in America that's come out here and got chickens, or I've hauled them chickens, and we do a little winning. We, we, we do our fair share. For leftovers, we do our fair share of winning. I've had them win money with me and then go buy a trio for some big-name guy, take it home, put it in a pen, and three years later, they're still bragging because they have that big-name... Que dice que... que... A la gente ganaba con sus líneas y vienen con él, son amigos de él, van y compran un, un, un trío de una, un famoso. Un famoso. Eh, tres años después tienen el trío, no ganan con ellos, pero emocionados porque tienen el trío de fulano. When they could have went to where I got my chickens, or to me, and got solid, honest chickens from me or the, what, the family we deal with. And, and I'm like, why? If we're winning with Hatch Radios, Why go get white blues like every Mexican does? Or if we were in with gray roundheads, why go buy that big sweater trio, in my opinion? Que si vas a estar ganando con, con radio hatches, hatches giros, para que ir a comprar es, esos cenizos búlicos, gallo gallinas de genis, yeah. asiles, it, japs. It, but, because in my opinion... And I'm not talking about nobody's chickens, good or bad. Everybody breeds what they want. Everybody has what they want. Everybody can do what they want. But it seems like the same things that have won throughout our life. Hatch Grays, Hatch Kelsos, Hatch Radios, Hatch Roundheads. Just continue to show up and win. And then every once in a while... One of them off-color ones win every seven years, Dice que, and everybody go wild. Que por años y años, 40, 50, 80 años, han ganado los Hatches, los Kelsons, los Albanis, los Radios. That's right. Los Giros han ganado, ganado, ganado. Y en vez en cuando llega un, una familia de Prietos, Blacks, Búlicos, right. Gallo Gallinas, Asiles, right. ganan un año, dos años, y a todo el mundo, everybody wants them. That's right. That's right. Everybody wants them. And then two, three years, everybody gets rid of them. Right. You would be surprised. Ya, ya, todo, ya, ya en los, o sea, todo el mundo los quiere, agarran, todo el mundo empezaba a vender gallo gallinas o, o asiles o japoneses o, o búlicos o blancos, cenizos, polacos, topis. Todo el mundo los quiere, quiere un chingo. They all start raising a bunch. Right. Everybody's got them now. That's right. And then they get, everybody goes through them. That's right. We've okay. seen it all come and go through the years. But, but it, what always amazes me with the chicken world is we see one of our amigos back when it was legal or back in, down in Mexico or in the Philippines. One guy will always be close or do well or do good because he's got two lines or three lines. Mm -hmm. And he sells them lines. Okay. I know where the good chickens are in America right now or Mexico or the Philippines. For brood fowl. And some people will go and get anything and everything and all other things but that. It's like they don't want 
that opportunity to get better. You know, we talk about the percentages in life. Mm -hmm. How every year if you tried to get 3% better in, you know, in 10 years you'd be 30% better. Well, if you was already at 60% and you're climbing up to 90%. Everything in life is percentages. Everything. Everything. So, in my opinion, and, I, and I'm not the best and I'm not perfect, but why would you go for one out of eight when you could get something solid and honest and get five or six or seven out of eight. Does that make sense? No. Because you're a Mexican. So, but one out of eight, one out of eight wins or? One out of eight wins with the off color. Okay. Que por qué la gente compra colores raros para ganar uno de ocho cuando puede ganar cinco o seis de ocho. Right. You can win five, six. Uh, or seven uh, out of eight with good, ocho. solid, honest con, product. Con gallos honesto sólidos este and, and it's funny how a couple of years ago nobody wanted hatches you couldn't sell a hatch con you couldn't sell hatch roosters a thing you no puede vender un gallo hatch para ver no lo puede vender and now they're coming back ya están regresando para atrás right you know me and Johnny Stancil used to talk a lot on the phone and um his right hand well his boss is Kimberly Kimberly Kim leads the key to the success, and then. Que era, era amigo de John Stanso y su, y su esposa. And uh, and 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 Miss Kimberly is probably one of the best, but she don't get the recognition and respect because Johnny always got it, and pero, they were on top of the world. Más respeto a, a él que a ella, pero era ella la, la parte atrás de él. Till he got sick. Well, after he got sick, Sammy was helping. Sammy Smith from Mount Pleasant, Texas. And Uncle Sammy, he's the one that helped me a lot on my feeding. Y, y, y el Uncle Sammy, cuando se puso malo John, Johnny Stanso, llegó a este, este Sammy Smith, y él fue que lo, ayudó, lo enseñó a, a cuidar. And one of the things that Johnny always said that always stuck in my mind is everything goes in three-year cycles. It's like everybody Sammy wants hatch that. chickens. No, Johnny said that. Que Johnny, decía, Johnny Stanso decía que todo va en ciclo de tres años. Por tres años quieren un, 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 quieren un, that's true. That's true. And, yeah. and, and here's your deal with, with it. It's like right now, there's a line that everybody wants and people are having them like one good day and then four bad days and they're trying to blame their feeder or their partner or their other guy or their pitter when their chickens are different que, or whatever. Que ahorita tienes, van una vez y ganan y pierden tres, cuatro veces y les están echando la culpa al... Al, al soltador, al pastor, a right. la comida, right. the medicine, right. the feed, right. Right. But it the don't, extra neighbor. That's right. But they, that's never, they never go back to the, the base, which is... They the, never look in the mirror. Yeah. Or like they'll no, get no, hatched. No, pero, ven todo, pero no ven la base donde llegó. That's right. But here's the deal. I'm, I'm going to say this. Like if they get hatched roosters for three years and they have a bad day, they say, oh, they can't cut. Or they'll get grazed for three years and then they'll say, oh, well, we're going to change over to something else. It's like it's never satisfactory. Nunca queda satisfecho con una línea. Siempre quieren agarrar más y más y más líneas. You know, Jeff Husband told me, he goes, if I were to just, just show, uh -huh. I would have two. That's right. Maybe three families. That's right. That's it. That's Así right. Jeff, que él, si él, él, él nomás jugaba, él tuviera una Dos o tres familias máximo. The only reason we have four, the only reason we have four is because the family that takes care of me has got, in my opinion, the best hatch, grays, and radios in America, and I had already got the round heads. Well, when I went to making the crosses, ever crossed, it worked Dice so que, far. Que que él, él agarró las mejores familias de una familia que tiene los mejores radios, giros, hatches, y ya tenía los round hits de otro amigo. Um, let's talk about where you got your, your families. Okay. Where did you get your families from? The, 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 ra the radios, the, the hatches, and the grace. All the credit in the world goes to Circle M, Diamond P, and that's Carlos and Mike Martinez. Que todo el crédito es para, para Circle M, que es este Carlos, ¿no? 
Mike, his brother. Mike Martinez. Bro Mike's the number one brother. And, and I hope Carlos uno, sees que, this video. Que, 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 que <laughs> Carlos, eh, um, Carlos y Mike son hermanos de sí. Ricky Martinez, yes. de el pastor de Cascabeles, el que fue yeah. pastor del año. Right. El and, año and their older brother, Bubba, is one of the greatest people you'll ever meet in your life. Y el hermano también, and, el más grande, el Bubba también and, es una persona muy fina. And their mom's an angel, but they've taken... Es una, 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 una angel, la mamá. They've taken me in like family. I mean, I've got to, when I go down to visit, Carlos lets me stay at the house. I mean, you know, we'll cook on the grill and hang out. But I, I really enjoy being in that area with them people, hanging out with them in that area. And it's, it's kind of like when and you get together. It's a comedy show that everybody else could sit around and watch with me and Carlos going back and forth. And then me and Mike, we team up on Carlos and bully Carlos. Okay. You know, it's Cuando just a good time. Cuando va para allá, se divierten y están jugando, cotoreando. Um, But they, the best, they, they, they've got the best. Este and my opinion, familias. And your rockets? They come from Larry Whitehead. Tienen um, de Larry Whitehead acá de South Carolina? Uh, Tennessee, but he lives at the other end of Tennessee by North Carolina. En Tennessee, pegado a North Carolina. Este, ahí está con los, los cabezas redondas. Yeah. Um, they sold you the, the brew file? No, they gave me the brew file. Uh, se lo regalaron. Uh, every, every gets on my, on my ass. Right. About me getting free brew, brew file from, you know, different people. Well, but, but now let me back up. We, we've all been together for 20, probably since 96 or 97. Me and Carlos and Lil Ricky and Mike and Bubba's been buddies, I mean, back all the way back all them years ago. Desde el 96 han sido amigos, ellos and, han sido familia. I mean, but here's the deal, you know, it's like I told Carl when he gave me the hatch to begin with. I told Carl, I said, I'm going to bring them home and I'll raise them. And whatever, you you just drive up to the house and get whatever you want. Or I'll haul them back to you if you need some pullets to breed or whatever. And we're, we do a pretty good job of raising chickens i know a, a lot of people differ on the way they raise chickens but we don't lose chickens right que tiene otro diferente modo de, de como crea este um talking about getting different families even the martinez play around with a, diff, a bunch of families right i'm not going to talk about that <laughs> hey I, I love mike i love mike too much It's, yeah, they can't help it. It's a um, fucking Mexican in there. Man. They can't fucking help it. I'm, I'm not answering they that question. They can't goddamn help I, it. It's I, a fucking Mexican I, in there. Hey, I, I, I sure do love Mike Martinez. <laughs> He's number one. <laughs> but, I mean, they, they start raising hennies and blacks and Japs. But they are so healthy and pretty. <laughs> the, how, the Japs? Any? Yes, yes. But now I'm going to tell you something. They do a fabulous job of raising beautiful quality. Do you like hennies? And uh, Mike's number one. <laughs> you like Henny? Yeah. I'm going to go down. Uh, Carl called me the other day. They're well, I mean, not they're Henny's. You like Henny's so, overall? So uh, Mike's number one. Okay, and and Bubba's a good guy. Okay, okay, okay. But Henny's overall, do you like Henny's? They're not for me. I just, I, I'm a little older and wiser. When I was young, I would help anybody, no matter what they had or what they had bread or whatever, you know, back when I was, it was legal and I was like young and skinny and good looking, we'd go every weekend. I'd help anybody. So how, I used to handle When it. you lost that family from Wallace and it got bad? Yeah. Why didn't you just go back? You know, you could have got it from Plummer. You got from well, we uh, O'Brien. You could have got from a dozen people. Yes, sir. That and, you know. and, and I seen them this or, weekend. Or, we or, sat and visited yeah, with or, them this weekend. Or you could have got some from, from, uh, from Martinez. Yeah, I could have. But Why my, didn't you? I, I'm ready. The, at this point in time in my life, I'm almost 50 years old. And I've seen everything come and go. And like Johnny used to, me and him would talk on the phone for sometimes two hours. And Kimberly would get on to us and make us get off the phone. But, but Johnny always talked about stay solid, be solid, have solid. Well, I was all over the place like everybody does. But... I've always worked my farm seven days a week, and I've been through all the fads with everybody else. Well, now I'm done. 
I'm gonna stick with the hatch, the grays, the radios, and them roundheads as long as they stay as long as they stay good to me. I'll be great to them. Okay, this is a weird question. If you took ten of your ACL Kelsos from 2016, okay, I know where this when is they going. were their prime. I know, and you took ten. Of hatch your radios, hatch radios, gray right radios, now, gray radios, and you did ten against ten. How would it come out? You more than likely would lose twenty. No, of, no, ten against ten. I that's what I'm getting at. More than likely, you would um, not have all twenty of them no more. That's how good they was and they are. What, I mean, what, they what, would what, just. What would be the score? There was right there what when was, when what, we was what, in what, our what, prime. What would be the score? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question because I'm gonna tell you why. When Beto and Michael was had them rolling, they'd stay in the three foot circle and maybe use that same rooster five, six, seven, eight times. And uh, I've watched the hatch radios win and their gray radios and their hatch grays win. Back when it was legal, my whole life, it was like right there. So I don't know how to answer that question. But you, do. but I would say this: you, you'd probably have, if you had ten of them on tie cords on one row and ten of them on tie cords on another row, at the end of the day, you'd probably have eighteen or twenty empty tie cords. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but. Do you think it's easier to lose an ACO family than an American family? Or you, do you think it's... Yes, I do, and I'm going to tell you why. ACOs, are, they, when they're up, they're all the way up. But the more you... With, with the experience we had, the more you breed them, and the more you breed the daughters and the cousins, and you bring in a hatch chicken and breed back to them, and you breed a Kelso to the hatch ACL pullets, the more inconsistent they get. They may weigh four pounds, six ounces, and have brothers that weigh five pounds, 12 ounces, and uh, these may be dark and these may be lemon. They was just inconsistent on all the crosses. So maybe if you have that, that magic cross and magic brew yeah, cross, maybe if, that magic ACO, you could have gone maybe 50-50 with your, your hatch radio grays right now, but... You're going to have these hatch rate of grace winning 80% for the next 20, 30 years. That's, and the ACOs are going to be going downhill. That's my opinion. I have to do what's best for me and my customers. Um, because here, here's my philosophy. I work a job. My wife works a job. When we come home in the evenings, we work another job right there in our backyard. When you rear back and raise 900 stags a year and you have 200 coming bull stags and you got a barn and you got a job and you got to mow and you got a weed spray and then in the winter you got to flop ice out of the bowls and put water in the bowls, why not have the best? Yeah. When you're going to dedicate your life to something, it's like them guys that play professional golf. On their days off, they may hit a thousand golf balls. So if you're going to have something and you have the ability to go buy what is the best, because here's the deal. If I travel and you travel and somebody calls me up and says, Toddy, what do you think about this? I can give you my honest opinion. You, and I'm going to tell you this, you... Everybody calls me goofy and everybody calls you a clown or they, whatever. Everybody wants to be here when me and you's talking trash and laughing and joking or me and Carlos or, or whomever. They want to be there listening to, to us laugh and joke, but then they want to run and talk about us, okay? You deserve a little more credit because of the miles and the hours you put into the rooster well, industry. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting paid for this. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to charge you for being here. You slept on my <laughs> couch last bugger. night. You That's going to be bugger. $60, and I bought you lunch today. Yeah. You're, you're about $72 you know, and, in and, the hole right now. And, 
and and but it, but it, it, but getting back to what I was talking about, the dedication that goes into this lifestyle. Why try average when you can go obtain the best? Is what I've learned the hard way. But the problem is, you get people like, and I'm not going to mention any names, but you get people breeders, and he probably knows who I'm talking about, and I don't give a shit. But you get breeders who used to breed 500 stags okay. eight years ago. Right. And now they breed 8,000 stags. Right. Or, yeah. or 5,000 stags. Well, and been selling three, 400 trills a year. Right. Right. And, and they don't have a problem with it. Well, they don't have a problem with fucking just, with just fucking people. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this. And, and it's not just that. It's not just... And it's, all the... Not all of them, but 90% of the big breeders do that shit. Okay. And I'll give you a story. Me and Brian, I've told you story a bunch of times. Me and Brian were at his house. Me and Brian, me and Brian Crocker fought together. Right. For four years. We went to this white guy's house to buy uh, 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 Wililas, Mexican carrot cages. And the guy had 300 hens running loose. And I asked him, are those crossed or pure hens? He goes, no, they're crossed hens. Three, four-way crosses. What do you want them for? Oh, all the American breeders come here and buy them for $25 and sell them as trios. Okay. When the, when the sweater phase was coming along. Right. And they all do that. Yeah. Me, personally. They all fucking do that. And you have these fucking Mexicans... Yeah. Buying from the big shot breeders. Right. And I don't give a shit people talk about me. I don't I, I mean I say what I want. I say how I want it. Well see I'm very and I don't, sensitive. And I don't, I don't I worry. I'm and very I don't, sensitive. And I don't give a damn what people talk about me. Right. And people call me arrogant, they call me cocky. I don't get paid for this. I don't right. get paid to do interviews. Right. I don't fucking have anybody, you know. I, I sell my products, I sell my tools, I sell my knives, I sell my boots. Um, I do this because I want to help out crockers. Right. I don't, if I talk shit about big breeders, I could get in trouble. Right, right. Well, you know... But, it, they, but, but you have all these Mexicans buying stuff from big breeders who are mass-producing fucking chickens. They got one fucking cock with 20 fucking hens. And there's massing, producing, massing, right. producing, and you have all these Mexicans going, thinking they're getting the best goddamn fucking rooster. Right. But then you have people like Jeff Husbeth. Right. Class act. Class act who nice only place. raise what they can raise. Right. And they say, you know what? After I sell my 80, 100 trios, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. And I told Jeff a bunch of times, Jeff Husbeth, <laughs> I go, how can you know, raise more? Because I want to sell quality. Right. Think fair. That's same goddamn thing. Right. Think fair. I went to his place. I go, how many are you raising? He goes, I think like 700, 800. Think, but you sell it out. Why? How come you don't sell more? He said, what for? Right. Yeah, I'm a simple man myself. I would, and, and, and I'm going to get in trouble for this. I know I'm going to get in trouble. Well, well but, but I don't here's the deal. You, know, you, you know, it's kind of like me right now. I just learned a very, very, very valuable lesson. And I understand what you're saying completely because I was on the other side of that. I was the breeder who had all the inconsistent go bad product. They were healthy. They were nice. They were gentle. Two, 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 three, two, four. You set them down, they cut their wing. You show them the feed cup, they jump up on your leg. They were perfect but inconsistent i got rid of that and i went back to solid for me because i'm gonna tell you why get back to work in this farm seven days a week first of all when we go to mexico to visit the friends and family down there i want to win i don't i don't want to get up here and stand up on a stage and say, oh, poor old Toddy sold this many trios this year. Look at me. 
I want me or my family or my friends, my amigos, to have quality that they can be proud of my product. And that's why I work seven days a week. I don't work seven days a week to have bad reports. I don't work seven days a week. And my wife, my wife works right beside me. My wife is the key to my success. She's very because lucky. she's very lucky to have you. She's a <laughs> lucky girl. Yeah. yeah she's a, but she but I, I need buck. I do need to throw that in there. You know, it, here's the deal. Back in the days when it was legal, we would round up and horse farm walk 70, 80, 90, call them down to 28 and go win. Okay. We had a system. And I'm and I said that to say this. We had a system back then that I still go by today. When I pin my stags, and I'm going to say this, I pin them at night with no light. My wife's got a light. I go in and I catch them, get them down, feel of them. I feel their toenails. I feel their body. If everything feels good, I hand them to my wife. She's got a headlight. She'll go put them in the wheeler and then we put them to the stag pins. If I find a cull, yeah, He's I like, kill him. And, and I'm going to tell you why. The reason I do it in the dark with no headlight, I don't want to check that toe mark and say, Oh, he's pure. Oh, he's pure. He's from oh, number one oh, my goodness. He's number one brood cock from my family. And, oh, I got to say, no. I cull in the dark. Oh, wow. Because I don't. Well, you know how tight I am. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna waste no damn money. And you don't. So, you, you don't want emotions to get into involved, and in, you don't want your emotions to get involved where you, you see that. Well, thing. two things. If I find a cull, I'm not gonna feed him because feed's too high. I'm not gonna sell him because he's a cull. Right. I'm not gonna keep him around and do all that extra work of flipping that ice out of that water bowl and dragging that hose. Because when it gets frozen around here, I shut my automatic water hey, down. Hey, you don't think those big breeders f feel bad about selling junk? I think, it, 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 in it, my it, opinion, it's been happening for years and years and years. Like I told you, it, it happened twenty-five years when me and Brian were fucking, you know, fighting chickens. Well, I saw it happen back then when yeah. all the Alabama breeders were buying roosters for twenty-five dollars, hands for twenty-five dollars, right, right. and sell them as as fuck yeah, as. And I don't, I don't, I know you don't want to talk about this, but they yeah. were selling pure sweaters as pure, and they're cross sweater hands. Right. Right. And you still have that happen right now. We right. know people who do that right now. Right. But what? Here's what I'm gonna focus on. Is but that, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't think they feel bad about that shit? I think it's a production nowadays. I think the rooster industry. If you had a big name thirty years ago and you've promoted it. You're still doing it. You're still who you are. You're still raising nice, beautiful chickens. That's what people want. We went to go see Mr. Peck yesterday. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Peck Brown, James. Uh, so we went to go see Peck, and, and I mean, they got solid, solid. Dogs. Solid. But now them chickens has always been solid. Yeah. You know, here, here's your deal. The old man, like we was talking about earlier in this interview, like my daddy, when he had them off-color chickens, they were his. When Mr. Peck was 40, he still got the chickens he's got today, and he's 72. Yeah. Who's that guy he said that he used to uh, fight with? Uh, famous guy? Uh, Doc, Doc Robinson. Doc Robinson. Okay. And, and, and somebody, though, they argued with me. Oh, no, he didn't get, no, he got all the Bruce talk from Doc. Right. Oh, no, so and so. I won't mention his name either. From Louisiana, got all the Bruce talk from Doc Robinson. No, he didn't. Right. And, and well, Peck was telling you about that year. And he, Peck, I got all the brew stock, right? And that guy from that state came yeah. over and wanted them, and I told him no, right? And you and and I've seen Peck people offer Peck, Mr. Peck Brown, big money for Yearly Hatch or Gilmore, and he won't sell a fucking right. feather, right? But now he goes back to them old school breeders when he was a kid, and you, you, you've me and you was talking about this earlier. Your raising is what you are. Yeah. Like my parents was broke, so I still act broke. You know, your parents was in the restaurant business, so you still eat lots of food. But but back in Mr. Peck's days when he was young, 
nobody sold no chicken. You couldn't get a damn chicken unless you got him out of that pile. Yeah, he he won't sell you. He won't sell it. You, you understand? If you, if, I wish you were asking for a yearly hat. No, I, I, he, <laughs> I, I got to joke with him. He wouldn't have got that. I tell him yesterday when he was talking about my chickens? He yeah. says, well, your chickens won't bring you one of my chickens. And he, was, he was joking with me. And, and I says, yeah, I understand. I understand. You know, and, and we were laughing and joking back and forth. But... That's the way them old men was. They don't believe. I guarantee. And, and I'm gonna tell you this: if you were asked him for, if you were asking for, a, for, for, for a hen, for a um, um, yellow hen or or whatever, or, it would have you'd, you'd you'd had to fight him right there in his in his back porch. Right, his yeah, back yeah I'd be like, like <laughs> "What'd you say?" And he would. <laughs> but but now that's the way. When everybody is like on their second and third and fourth generation of rooster people, that's the way, by God, they're bred. The, the people are bred that way. You couldn't get one for love or money. And, you know, and they've all got that one story. Yeah, in 1977, I let my cousin have some, and he give them to that other guy, and then they're still arguing. And it's 40 when years later. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, 1977? I'm still pissed <laughs> off at him. Well, that, that's how, that's their mentality. And I'm going to tell you something else. Like Peg Brown, you, yeah. you said, are you, are you, are you, uh, 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 what's it called, Gene Brown? No, yeah, Gene yeah. Gene Brown's fucking. Yeah, I said, I said, I've heard of you. Are you Gene Brown? He said, <laughs> no, hell no, I ain't Gene. Your first cousin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they hate each other. And, and, and I like Gene. Gene, me and Gene, we speak and talk. But they, can't, they can't stand each other. They lived in the, what, the same driveway or the same yeah. neighborhood or whatever. And, and I'm like. I think Gene could get more to ask for a rooster. He'll yeah. just shoot him. <laughs> But, you know, and, and, and like I say, Gene and his son, I see them from time to time, and we always laugh and talk, and, you know, but, man, that's the way them old people was. They don't, to us, we come in and say, all right, I'm going to go to Texas and get my brood stock from my family, and I'm going to come here, and I'm going to set my rooster and that hen, and then I'm going to single mate that rooster, and I'm going to make my brood stock. That's the way me and you think, because we're looking to the future. Them old men look at their whole history. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like Mr. Peck. He's had that same family since 1977. He's still pissed off that his cousin give one away. Yeah. Well, when I roll up out there where I get my brood stock, I go out there and I say, Mike, come on, let's go look. And Carlos like, no, I want in. And, you know, and then we laugh and joke, cut up and carry on. But we're looking to the future. Okay, we'll go back to that situation though. They got the best grace, the best, the Hatch, best ra hatches, and the, the best, best radios. radios anywhere in the earth. Yeah. Anywhere. And they're looking for hennies and japs and, and ace heels and. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, hey, I love my. <laughs> of them. Yeah, my, and they're gorgeous. Horkin Healthy. It's got, a, it's got 400 hennies. Hey, hey, Bert, at, at, at Carlos and Mike, you pull up, the roosters cut their wings, they're red Jorge headed. Jorge Vasquez got 400 hennies. Well, he's a good guy. <laughs> but All these motherfuckers I, got hennies I, now. I, I, they're my friends, man. Hey, they all got japs. Uh, and they, you know, here's the thing. My ACOs, they come from plumber. Uh-huh. I went and I, I stole a personal brewcock that plumber gave... Bonbon, bon. and I mm -hmm. went to Bonbon, and I go, Bonbon, bon, I want this brew cock. He goes, it's yours. He gave it to me. I got hell for it. I have people calling me all every day. And then I ate that penny, it's from Lindell, personal gift. And I grabbed, Bonbon, bon, please. <laughs> he goes, God damn it, take him. <laughs> okay. My ACOs are good fucking ACOs. The reason I breed them is because people want them. Yes. And I'm gonna get in trouble. I don't like ACOs. Right. And I shouldn't fucking say that because it's like me having a restaurant saying, saying Oh, I uh, don't like my own food. Yeah, don't get that fucking don't, enchilada. Yeah. That enchilada tastes kind of bad. Right, I mean, right. but it's but, like, okay, they're not my style. Right. I was raised, I mean, my, my grandpa, he loved, you know, game motherfucking roosters, Mango Jalisco, rest in peace. He loved game, game roosters. He paid five hundred. I would pay my uncle, uncle eight hundred dollars, 
25 years ago. He charged me $800 for, 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 for a battlecock. He goes, Uncle, I need, I need some good roosters. He goes, how many you need? He goes, six. I go, I got no money. He goes, okay, fine, go, go get some. How much are they? $800. Spar through them. They were, ready, they were ready to show. I go and pick them and win the derby. Mm -hmm. But what breed was they? My, my uncle bought from Oscar Aikens. He bought so they from were good bread, hatch. Good bread, hatch, Kelso, Yellow okay. Lake. Okay, we see we the see. Time, the old time sweaters. We seem to keep going the, back to this hatch crosses win. I and, tell you what, and we've I, all been all over the place. We've all bred. You know, it's been probably three years ago. Lad called me one day, and we're talking on the phone. Dwayne Lackey sitting next to him. And lad, he's got the speakerphone there, and they're bullying me like they always do, and this and that and the other. And he says, "Oh, Dwayne says, Ty Dixon, I got something for you." I said, "What do you do?" He says, "I took my sweaters and my whites and my pumpkins, and I bred them all together." Who was that? Dwayne Lackey. Hey. I said, uh, "Really? Yeah, boy, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that." And I kind of got quiet. No lad says, "Hey, you still there?" I said, I said "Yeah." I said, uh, "Dwayne, I got a question." Yeah, yeah. I said, "So you gonna breed white sweater pumpkins?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, "Are you mad at yourself?" You don't fuck yourself. What so lad gets to laughing, and Dwayne's trying to hang the phone up. They, I mean, just. Was it a true story? Though? Yeah, it's a true story. And he really was going to raise yeah, them? Yeah. Yeah, he was really going to raise those. Did he? Yes. He did raise them? Yes. Like two of them. Yeah. So anyway, so my ACOs, they're good fucking roosters. And I'll tell you, I'll, why do you think ACOs do so good in Mexico? Can, I'll, give you, I'll ask you your opinion and I'll give you my opinion. I'm going to tell you from experience, when I, when I was was with Beto and Michael and just dominating. There was two things. Health, Gorta, three-foot circle. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is everybody else was coming at them. Rushing, yeah. Now nobody rushes. Now nobody rushes. So if they meet each other 12 rounds in a row, you got six and six. Yep. And, and I think, in my opinion, that when ours started going down there, we had an advantage because everybody was running at us. Yeah, you're right. Same thing with, same thing with Butch. Uh -huh. Butch was winning with a Toppy, toppy Cowens because they were cut so good. Yeah, if and you they, walk at them or and, rush and, at them, they, they, they stay there. And the other ones will rush, and then like right before, three feet before they get there, they're like, "What? What the hell?" No, he's not, he's not. And then they would, exactly. And it was over. over. No, not not stand around, not look around, not call for help. Over. over. And I tell you one thing too. For me, they're super fucking healthy. They're That's health. Right. They're healthier the health. than, than the American roosters. That's right. Mexicans are notorious for feeding chickens. Fat and full of feed. Fat and full of feed. Eight ounces too fat. Yeah. And full of feet. Yeah, full, fat and full feet. And ACOs can fight good fat and full feet. Right. That's right. And that's why they do They're good. They're the perfect Mexican chicken. Right. And I'll and ask you one thing. You've been to the Philippines. Yes, sir. And you've been in top competition in the Philippines. Uh, yes, sir. And you've done uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I stay with Jin Jin when I go over there. Jin Jin is a big... Jin uh, Jin's a big... Uh, Burico, right? Dom, yeah. Dom, Dom. Dom. He's one of them world slashers. He's one of them stag events and everything. And he's like an older brother to me. Him and his family took me and my wife in like family. And you talk about fun now. I mean, we real. They put me and my wife in their Christmas family photo. Oh, wow. So we're all over there and we're hanging out and this and that and other. And, and I mean... I run into Jin Jin at the Bayou Club. He was with the Danger Boys. The Danger, the 808 Danger Boys that I used to help. And uh, we, we're we all sitting around talking. And, and uh, Marty told Jin Jin, says, yeah, Todd's going to the Philippines. He's got a fiance over there he's going to bring to America. And this is like, oh, 
five, maybe. You've had to have been there, if, you know. But anyway, so old Jin Jin's like, hey, Todd, Todd, you stay at my place, man. You stay at my place. Well, I fly in like December the 17th and I had to fly home like January the 3rd or whatever the dates was. I ain't never met this joker in my life. Marty introduced me to him. We leave like it's the world championship in May. I called him. I said, hey, bud, I'm coming over. I'll be there like this date at this time. Uh, what's your address? I'll get a cab. He's like, no, no, no. We will get you. And they showed up with like security. And I'm like, and I'm a dumb ass mark. So I ain't never been nowhere at that time. Right. And, uh, I mean, I land and Kathy, she's a poor Filipino, ain't got nothing living with her grandma, you know, going to college and, and they like put us in like a Land Rover and they got another Land Rover behind oh, us. Wow. And, and I mean, they just took us in like family. So we go, we get there and stay at the phone with Gingy in and then like the next morning, he's like, come on, Ty, we go to the Derby. And then it was every day, every afternoon. Well, it comes Christmas Day and they're getting in there and they done opened up and man they've got a big huge production going on there and this and that and other and his daddy's name's ashley papa ashley he's like y'all come on in it's time for the family photo and this and that and other. so me and my wife i get her, kathy and we get over out of the way and ginger's like hey, that, that, that. so we were gonna go get on the end no no in the middle we no. all hugged up in the middle of their christmas family photo oh wow we had known him about eight days Six days, wow. whatever it was. Good people over there. Oh, man. Jin Jin, he's all aces in my book. You, Yeah. But, okay, now I'm going to tr- get you in trouble now. Uh-uh. No, I don't get in trouble. No, no, you, you're in trouble. <laughs> okay, Jin Jin, and, and you met a lot of good people over there, right? Yes. Who else did you fight with over there? Uh, just Jin Jin. I stayed with a June, June Mendoza, attorney okay. June Mendoza. He fights under JM Fantastic okay. over there. And Jin Jin comes here... You, he's your house, it's your house for him and yeah and, and Mendoza too when I stay any other Filipino that comes here so <laughs> when <laughs> come on come on no more Filipinos allowed here <laughs> no no hey come on hey, come hey, on listen, come listen. on don't, come on don't get me in trouble <laughs> I'm gonna be honest <laughs> come on be honest why yeah. won't you allow other <laughs> Filipinos here uh <laughs> did come one time and he calls me up. He, Dad, 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 we're in Dallas. And send me your address. I said, okay. So he, he shows up and uh, over at my daddy's house. So he's like, he gets out of the car and he gets his bag and like comes to the door. And, and I'm looking at his bags. He's like, hey, Dad, Dad, I'll stay with you maybe 10 days. I said, well, come on in. Hell, you open your house up to me. I'm yeah. opening my house up to you. And man, we went everywhere together. Nice. Yeah, we had, we had, he's he is so funny. So how come you want to have the Filipinos you you're from? I I have a few Filipinos I hey, can. You're not deal the only with. one. L- 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 Most me, American breeders won't allow Filipinos in their farm. Well, when I have a Filipino customer come to get brewed chickens. Or, I mean, well, here's I, what I, I, I more exaggerated, but here's how you do it. Here, here's how I deal with Filipino people. I tell them I'm going to get off at 5 o'clock, be at my house. We all introduce ourselves, and and I tell them, I look here, do not pull one tail feather, because they like Mexicans. They, they, they use their tail as a handle. Right. Yeah, they got that big handle hanging out right. the back of them. <laughs> you know, and if it's a good handle, it's got eight tail feathers on each side. <laughs> That's the Mexican and Filipino handle. And then they grab him like a soccer ball that they're fighting over, you know, in a scrum. Yeah. And and uh, I just that I just can't take that. Right. I, I can't. It, it's like you pushing on their feet and checking on them and doing this and doing that. You, you just don't realize how close you've come. But uh, with the Filipinos and the Hawaiianers, I got a group of Hawaiianers, the 808 Danger Boys, they come, and uh, Marty, he'll go out there and pick up every damn chicken out there, and they look at the, the scale, scale on this toe, and they look at that scale behind this spur. Okay. I said, Marty, there's chickens. I'm going to go feed. <laughs> really? or when the Filipinos come, I said, there they are. Don't pull no tail feathers. Don't take one off out of a pen or off string. I'm going to go feed because they're so 
meticulous, so particular. And that's cool. I'm fine with that. I spend a lot of time selecting what I select and what I look for. But after a while, you either know what you're doing or you don't. I can walk through, and you can ask you you, next time you see Brian, me and Brian, I can walk through a yard. I said, boy, I like that one. And he's like, how do you do it? You've never seen these chicks. There's 400 here. How do you pick that one? And I said, well, I like that one. And and I mean, we we just, we laugh about it. Corcoran? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you one thing, though. In Philippines, uh-huh. competition compared Philippines to Mexico. I'm gonna say this about both places, <laughs> and don't be nice to Mexicans, or oh, just tell the honest truth. Where's the top of your competition tougher? I, I I'm gonna say this because I travel. Okay, let's say I travel, and let's say me and you go and we win in Mexico. When I come home, all the guys are gonna be like, "Oh, Toddy got lucky again. Toddy and Victor got lucky." In the Philippines and in Mexico, it don't make a damn where you go. You better have your damn mind made up. You better damn well have them healthy. You really, 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 really need to have them sharp because you're going to meet, if you go to, say, an Intercontinental or a Pit Masters type deal, you're going to meet seven or nine or whatever the case may be that you're going to have to completely be 1,000% correct is it, to is whip it, them. Is it harder in the Philippines or Mexico? Where are the companies are tougher? I, I, in my opinion, yeah. in my opinion, Mexico, and I'm going to tell you why. Really? I think the Mexican style is the most brutal of anything ever right now. Okay. And it's the tools y'all use, the equipment y'all use. But you think that you think that the because in the Philippines, where they have better breeders, the Philippines or Mexico? Well, it's just two different animals, and and, and I'm gonna explain this. Everything goes in that three year cycle. Right, even Philippines too. Even in the Philippines, you know, um, you take some of the old Filipino guys that got credit for winning some of them derbies. They might have, see over there in the Philippines, you, they got all them islands. Whereas you fight two on your island, and if you win them two, you move over three islands, and everybody that's won two comes to this island, and then you fight two here. And if you win two here, that puts you 4 and 0. Oh, then you move to Manila to fight the last three. So back, 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 yeah, back, back, back. all them associations and all them. Okay, you may win two right there next to your house. But you got to get on a boat or an airplane to win those. To go over here to win these two. You got to travel. Right. Well, okay, let's say you're learned to travel and you go over there and you meet one of the boys from there and he's got one he sparred 3,172 times. Because in Filipinos, they save a lot of their roosters to three and four years old, but they spar them every, every day. day. He's been sparred every, every day of his life. How many he, times? 3,172. They so, spar two, three times a day. Oh, sometimes six times a day. The same rooster. Same rooster. For three years. For three years. Except for the molt. No, hell. Oh, yeah, except for the molt. Right. They start sparring when they get buttons. Or, or, this, this, this is why I. It, th- it's, it's unreal. What, but this is why I think it's harder over there, though. Well, you have, I think you have better selectors over there. For what they do. For what they do. I think you have better land in Mexico. Yeah, because it's on the side of a hill and there's green in Mexico, and they've got drainage. Where? In the Philippines. No, but I think the, I think the, the weather, okay. I think there's more disease in the Philippines. It is, for a fact. Than, than Mexico. For a fact. So, I mean, you have pros and cons. I think it's. Most of the some Mexico places are really good land. There's not a lot of good land in, in Philippines, I think. Or oh, I think it's very humid and it's very rainy. Oh, very doubt. And a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of problems in the Philippines. Right. Typhoons, um, coconuts fall out of trees and hit roosters and kill them right. in the Philippines. Them damn coconuts with them husk on them, you don't realize how big they are. Jim Mendoza, he loses a half a dozen roosters a year. Because the coconuts are about that big around and they're about that tall and they're full of water. Right. 
Well, hell, they'll be 70 or 80 feet up there in the damn tree. And if something comes and shakes or the wind blows and that joker falls, it'll kill a damn rooster. A person too. Oh, a person. Hey, they on rainy weather, them coconuts are going the ground that far. When they fall, they, I mean, it's, you walk out there and you see holes all over the but farm. People, kill people too? I'm sure. Okay, so what, what I'm getting at is that, you know, over there you can hire people for dirt cheap. So you have... Two dollars a day. Two dollars a day. Cuarenta pesos al día. Pagan. Uh, but you don't see a lot of aces over there, huh? No. No, over there, you got to go. Even their, even their black chickens over there and their doms and their whites, you got to go. But I see a lot of side by side, though. Well, in some of the areas, they go side by side. In some of the areas, they... And I mean the feathers fly, but the bigger the bigger pits they go side by side. Yeah, no, the bigger pits they go straight up. Smaller pits they do that side by side stuff. Now you think there's an advantage a side by side rooster to a Russian rooster? I think there is. I think there's disadvantages to a side by side rooster. Really? And I'm gonna tell you why. Because Mexicans are they 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 were going up in the air, pulling on the rooster going up in the air, you know back. Before Butch, right? Butch came to the picture. Right. They side by and side. Beto Michael was Beto the same. Michael followed Butch. And then they the followed. Two. They caught. They well, Beto, Beto Michael followed Bush. That's right. But they was two in the same, a three foot circle. Right. But come, Butch come here. Bush started. Right. Okay. Bush started it, and then and Beto Michael. Michael's very smart. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Michael and by, Beto Michael. He's been here. But but Michael, I have a lot of respect for. I both for both of them, but Michael's. You know I. A lot of respect for that man. And, um, you know, he, he he started that too, you know? Right. Well he, well, he continued it. But now I see they're going back to the other thing, pulling on the rooster again. Right. That's right. Because they got to go get them. But you know why, though? To go get them. No. Okay. It's their ego. Okay. They can't stand. Yeah. A yeah. boring fight where they go sad, but they want, oh, no, 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 no. I want to see him go up in the air. Okay. Okay, all right, let, let me get back to this walking side by side. My daddy was a five-time undefeated Golden Glove champion boxer. Oh, okay. He says Julio Cesar Chavez was the greatest fighter ever. Mike Tyson was the greatest puncher ever. And I'm on, I said that to say this. On our farm, we keep our roosters long and lean. Perfect little football bodies. I've had lots of Mexican guys come here and say, ah, they're, they, they're two ounces light, they're three ounces light. I said, yeah. Julio Cesar Chavez was the one my daddy said was the perfect boxer because he would walk around thin, bulk up, tone up, and go in, right. and then walk around thin. We do the same thing here. Here, yeah, right. Okay. Now, we want him to swing like Mike Tyson. But we want him to live like Julio Caesar Chavez. Okay. All right. On my daddy's philosophy of Southpaw boxers versus conventional boxers. <clears throat> when them roosters walk around and turn sideways, there's going to be one that's 180 degrees wrong. Yep. And there's going to be one that's got that angle on him. Right. Well, in the Mexican version... If you get wrong nine times in a row and let me get right nine times in a row, you're going to have a long drive home. And I think even in today's society, you'll see boxing on TV and them commentators will talk about he's a southpaw, so he's got to get round. He's going to block more with his right and jab with his left. Right. Pacquiao can use both hands from any angle because he... Put in the time, the effort, the love, the dedication. He committed his life to right this right here. But you take a southpaw boxer, you have to work his system to win. Right. Where a conventional boxer can knock you out straight up or side. That left-handed guy is more of a jabber worker, and that Mike Tyson is more of a Not knock a you out out okay so i think it's a huge disadvantage for them to turn sideways 
for the one that's on the wrong side awesome. of the angle of the participation. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes sense if you're stuck on the, if you if my roof's just on the, he's got, he's, you know, standing with his left foot right here. Right. Because if you walk up and you got your left foot there and you cut your wing at him and he's facing you, right. as soon as you turn around, guess what you are? Right. I understand that. That's we the philosophy you we use here at my house, and it goes back but to I, I I did that all year long, and and here's 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 how my season started. My season started when me and Clark got together. Right. We done real good in January. Mm -hmm. And after that, we couldn't win a goddamn fucking fight. Okay. We couldn't win. We couldn't win if our life depended on. It. We couldn't right. cut ourselves out of a paper bag. Okay. And what happened was we were we, we both wanted to be Batman. Right. You know and, and I see that a lot. Yeah, we both wanted to be Batman. We both want we were both wanted to outshine the other master. Right, right. And um we couldn't win a goddamn fight. Mm -hmm. So we just said, you know, we're still friends, we split up. He went up north, he started winning. I stayed down there, I started winning. Right. I started winning with you know, Cascabellas gave me the chance to feed for them. Right. But I didn't have a lot of roosters. Right. And I didn't have first pick. Right. And, I, and I've told that to, you know, Cascabeles, you know. And, but he's the only one that gave me the chance. The, I've Nobody seen. Nobody else believed in me. You know, I've. And, and, I, I've, like, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. And, and, I, and the other day, we, 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 have, we, you know, we kind of talked and talked and talked. And I said, you know what? Um, if you want to keep feeding for you, I'd love to. And if you don't, I understand. But right. But I will always be grateful for what you did for me. I will never forget that. You know, I, I'm a, and, and you've got on to me about it time and time here and there. I'm big about, I pay my credit where my credit's due. Right. And I will always do that because it's like I tell people when they come here to. You, yesterday you were saying Circle M, Circle You said Circle M like fucking goddamn. Yeah, but I love. 255 times. Yeah, but I love Mike. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. And I and I and, and I told and you, I agree with and you. And I told you that I go. You know what? And and I'm not talking bad about Circle M or anything, but once they leave Circle M's place, right? And they're I'm, your bloodlines. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but and, I I'm a humble. And I'm, I'm, I may I may, I'm, I may be tipping on toast here, but but you know Circle M doesn't say he doesn't call them jumper radios. Right, right, right. No, and I, and I understand that, but. But I, you're so you're so you're so grateful right. to Sir Graham what they yeah. done for you because they well, took family. Well, for me, that yesterday you you mentioned Sir Graham like a two. Well, we was talking times. back and forth about this and that and other, and I am the, you know, it's like I tell people when they come here to get chickens, I just work here. That's my simple, and, and I told you, yeah. I, I'm a simple man. That's one of my favorite songs. That's what I live by. I like to laugh and joke and play, but I will pay my credit to who took care of me when everything was going wrong. Yeah. They stepped in. They and said, you, hey. You know and, 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 you know, even Bubba talked about it. He said, hey, you're in the family. And, you know, we laugh and joke play about it. But it, it's like I am grateful and respectful, and I still work seven days a week. So know, You know what? You're actually right because I got I, I got you in the, in the morning about the case. You know, I go, why do you mention Circle M so many times, so many times, so many times? And you told me, you know, the whole story, you know? Right. And I told you, but they're your line now, but you still mention them. Yeah. But here's but, the thing, though. People get sick and tired of me measuring Cascabeles. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I was mentioning because I can't, just like you, you right. can't forget what they did for you. What they did and for I me. And I can't forget what, right. what Cascabeles and, and, did for me. And will continue to do. See, that that's part of the deal. You know, if I called him right now and said, hey, I need to borrow $36 to pay my light bill and water bill and $172 to pay the light bill and I need two gray pullets, he'd be like, well, damn, come on, I get you $200 and two gray pullets. But if it's just, that's the family right. relationship we have. You know, it's kind of like... But you're, you're grateful to them. you damn right. And, and you're grateful to them. Like, like me, I, I'm grateful to the people who helped me out. Right. And luckily, I've never been ever, 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 ever been fucked over by any cockfighters. Never. <laughs> I've always had good luck with people, yeah. and I've always got. I've never, ever, 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 right. ever had any right. cockfighters well, talk bad about, about me or or um, 
you know, open a farm up and, 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 and steal my fowl and steal my family <laughs> and take my name and, and, you know, I've never had any people like, you know. Hey, 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 um, hey, 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 get back to the interview. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm saying, hey, 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 I'm saying hey, have I? have big hearts and, you know, yeah, I've never have, gotten a job for people and they hey, say, hey, you know, you know what, I don't need you anymore. Have or, I ever told you I love uh, Mike Martinez? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the number one yeah, brother. That's never happened to me. Right, right, I understand, but no. I mean, I've never made, you know, pale, pale face, you know, short. I mean, right. Rooster's famous, and, right? And right. that person I, I, never I, talked to him again, or right. I've never. Uh, I know, just, I just work. <laughs> make uh, people who sell candy in California who raised fifty roosters famous. And right, right. Now raised three thousand roosters. Right, I, that's never happened to me. I understand. It's, it's like a, I understand. It's a fairy tale, you know. And I, yeah. and I'm grateful to God because that's never happened to me. Right, right. Because cocktail <laughs> is so honest. <laughs> well, and I, 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 I can say it never helped anybody open a a a, a, a bar and it gave me eighty thousand dollars and 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 got fucked over and gave right. a job and well, see, that's never happened to me before, see, you know. See, here, here, life is good. I <laughs> understand, you know, but it's like see, with me. Life blessed me with good people. <laughs> well, see, with me, if somebody calls me wanting to borrow eighty thousand. I'm going to hang up on them. That's, that's your fault. <laughs> but no, I mean, what, you know, it's, it's, it goes back to this, you know, and, and, and I comprehend what you're saying. But I'll, I, once I, I'm so damn hard-headed. Once I make my mind up, that's what I'm going to do because I feel like if I do good, have good, be good, good will come back. If you treat people good, it'll come back. Yeah. And and I'm just don't get me wrong, you know. If anybody needs anything, I do my best or, or try or whatever. I ain't perfect, but when you have that person or them people, no matter who it is that do you right or wrong, you always remember it. And for me, yeah. I will admit what went right, and I will admit what went wrong. Oh, I'll give you an example. There, there's, a, there's a saying in Spanish that says, and I got hate for this. I said, when I lose, it's not because I met a better rooster or a better team. I lost because I didn't. I wasn't 100%. Okay. And I got hell for it. Right. Hell for it. Right. Oh, you're not giving fucking, your people, you know, person you're, you're, you're going against fucking credit, blah, 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 blah. And I go, look. I can get the best hatches in right. the goddamn world. Right. If I asked you for your personal brew cock, I could go and take it right now and right. you take God, I'm a fucking, fucking Mexican. That's right. And I fucking take your best brew cock. Right. And I can go to Lindell, I can go to I can go right. Mr. I can go Mr. Peck and get the right. best the best brew cock. Right. I can get the best hatches I want. Right. In my style that I want. Right. I can get the best jelly cocks. I can go to Ding Fair. Ding Fair says picture. I didn't take whatever you want. I said, thank you, Dink. I don't need any. Thank you. Right. You know, George Torres told me the same thing. I mean, a bunch of people told me the same thing. Right. So, I analyzed everything, right? Right. The day I went to go show, I said, okay, were you on your fucking phone all goddamn day, motherfucker? Right. Did right. you get up on time? Well, you're there the whole fucking, the whole keep. Right. Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you set up everything? Did you set up the trailer right? Did your electrical go out? Everything. Everything, everything. Were right. you focused? Right. right. And, I, and I understand what you're saying. I comprehend. I'm a perfectionist. You know, it, it's like I tell people, you know, if, if, if we happen to get by each round and I always shake the other guy's hand and I pat him on the shoulder at, you know, I'm real humble, and I'm real grateful for every round we get by. Right. And I always show my respect. But when you go, but no. I understand part. Well, I understand all of what you're saying because here's my deal: if I took care of them 365, if I did everything I was supposed to do at home, and I get to the arena in Mexico and don't have no luck. Either one or two things happened. I didn't do something right, or I met the number one perfect specimen right. that and was that, better that, that's than me. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, back when it was legal, there was a time or two I told the other guy when I shook his hand and 
patted him on the back. Thank you, sir. Good, good round. I don't own one that could keep up with that one. Right. You're, you're, and, and it happens. It, it's happened to me. But, and, and, but 90% of the time, that, what, that 10% of the time, I get out roostered. I get a, beat a better rooster. Right, right, right. But that 90% of the time that that's I lose. That's on you. That's on me. That's on you. It, it's like one guy said, oh, so everything you do is your fault. Oh, so if my wife cheats on me, it's my fault? Well, who picked the fucking goddamn whore? <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I, I understood what you said when you said it, and I seen you catch all the hell behind it, but I thought to myself, I said, this is my chance to bully him because I love bullying Boo Green, but I also understood what you were saying, but you were saying it Wrong like way. you said it wrong instead right. of saying... Damn, I didn't do this Thursday and I didn't do that Friday. But I'm going to tell you something that nobody ever talks about in the rooster world. What's and that? that's from July to November when it's hot, when it's dusty, when the allergies are out, when it's time to mow, when it's time to worm, when it's time to feed the best of the best of the best to build the best bodies, to build the best feathers, when they're dropping them <clears throat> feathers and growing them feathers, a lot of rounds is won or lost during July to November of every year. Because they'll be like, well, I let my son take care of them and we're going to go to the river or we're going to go to Florida. And then hunting season rolls around. Well, we're going to go to Colorado and we're going to go to Missouri. And then turkey season rolls around. Boy, we went over to the white guys. We, yeah. Now, the Mexicans, they go to Mexico for th for two, three months. Right. And and the feed stores, I, and I've seen all the feed stores that told me, I sell more scratch during the off season right. than any time else. And this is when I should sell the best feed and the most vitamins. You know, over there where we was yesterday with Mr. Brown. They were talking about this. We was talking about the same thing. And I told them what I fed. And one of the guys standing there, they're like, damn, that's the most expensive pellets they make. I said, yes, sir. It sure is. Yeah. They, they didn't comprehend. And they're good boys. They're good guys. They're good older gentlemen that we really look up to. They didn't understand what I was saying. They didn't. My chickens are getting the best right now that money can buy. For the very simple fact of when we go to Mexico to visit and when we hanging out with everybody, mine has had the best they could get, whether it be product, medicines, pellets, worm peels, it don't matter. You work your ass off from July to November and it'll be a few more than percentages. We're, we're Me and you always talk always about, talk about that we always talk about the difference in this percentage and that percentage and that percentage is very, very, very little money, little time, little effort, little worm peels. My uncle I Sammy, I, I, he used to talk about, he said there's four W's. Work, worm peels, water hose, win. Right. The four W's. And if you ain't going to do no work, don't buy no chickens. Right. If you ain't going to drag no damn water hose, don't buy no chickens. If you ain't going to get the best worm peels on the market, don't buy no chickens. Right, you're right. Because you damn sure ain't going to win. If you ain't got them three W's, you ain't going to get that fourth W. You're right. And it takes four W's to win a four cock. Right, you're right. You're and right. I'm a simple, small-minded man. You get on to me all the time about I'm in my rut, in my lane, in my program, and you'll call me and say, oh, so-and-so, Coscavellas did this, and little Ricky did that. And I'm like, man, congratulations. I'll tell the family. Right. Well, I'll be down there working when you call. Or you'll be down there doing your business, and you'll call, and, and i okay, yeah, tell them congratulations. But I still come home and go through my gate, go in my barn door, and I follow my four W's, chasing them four W's. You're right. At the Palenque. And I'm a... I'm not a smart, I'm not educated, I'm, I'm not the, the going to win no Nobel Peace Prize or nothing, but I feel like if I can produce the best product available 
for me and my wife and my friends and my family and my customers, the legacy goes on. Well, I remember when you, when you were at Sunset, you were top competition. We was for what we had to work right. with. You got off the track with the, the Spangle Aces for a while. Right, right. But you you didn't get off the track because you did good with them. Right. For that one part. What? But you were smart enough to see it and move on and give away four hundred and eight roosters. That's right. That were you know at three hundred dollars a piece. That's right. That's one hundred twenty thousand dollars you get away for free. That's right. And your Bruce talk That's and right. the hands. Right. And, and the crosses o- and the crosses and start over. That's right. And you and and that to me takes a lot of fucking balls. Yeah. It's like you know. Well, it was the work, the time, the effort, the four W's that went into them. Right. I mean, the, and, like I mean, and like I said, I was I'm grateful to Clark because he he helped me out a lot. It didn't work out. Um, but we're still friends. Right. That's and, that's all we can do. And, because here here here's my deal in life. You know, some of the people, let's say back in the day when it was legal, and I was handling for some of the people. Some of the times it worked, some of the times it didn't. Some of the times they had them fat and full of feed, and I didn't say a word. Some of the times they would say, well, Todd should have done this or Todd could have done that. We put all that behind you. When you get up tomorrow morning, that's a new life, a new day, a new opportunity. You can't always look behind you. You got to look at the... Horizon, right? You ain't got to look at the sunset. You understand, right? You get up the next day and you're like, "Today's a new day. I'm gonna up my percentages today." No, and, and I'll tell you one thing: of all those people that you know did me right, and the one that did me wrong, I thank him. Lesson learned. Lesson learned, and I'm here because of those people, and I'm at, I'm at, I'm where I'm sitting at because of those mistakes I made, right? Those things I did right and the things I did wrong right. is where I'm at right now. And where I'm at right now is the best, best place. Right. And I'm blessed. And I'm blessed, you know, agradecido con Dios that I'm here where I'm at right now. That's correct. At my house, sleeping on my couch, <laughs> getting to interview me. <laughs> and look at good chickens. <laughs> yeah. You should have. You should have. You're your watcher set here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell no. Uh-uh. Oh, your no. Oh, your puppy. Hell no. I love Lily Bear. We got we to gotta say we love Lily Bear. But... You know, it, it, I got a buddy of mine I went to school with, and he's a black guy, and big old ears, always smiling, always in trouble. The funniest, roughest, ain't scared of nothing dude I've ever met in my life. I could call him right now, and, and he'd be on his way. Donald Ray Brock, and we've been friends all our life, and he's one of the best people to me, and ain't scared of nothing nowhere. He told me one time, he said, Tidy. Let me tell you something. He's a smooth talker. He's he's a cool dude. He said, let me tell you something, boy. I said, what you got, boy? He says, in life, there's two types of lessons. There's taught lessons and there's bought lessons. Yep. And we've both had our share of, a bot. of both. Both. A both. And I live by that. That's why if there's something, when, you have, when a coach calls that time out, on a team, make the correct change. Yeah. Right. Well, last year I called a timeout. He made a big change. What what, what does Nick Slavin say on losing? Uh, Nick Saban, the coach at Alabama, he's one of my mentors. I listen my to a lot too. of my lot of his quotes and speeches, and he can go one or two sentences and change your life. He said one time. He's got two sayings that I love, and it's the, one of the first ones was, you cannot teach unsuccessful people success. And I'm going to say that again. You cannot teach unsuccessful people success, success. because it's all the way over here, 180 degrees away. Because their, dad, well, they, their daddy and mama taught them. I mean, it's what... Right. They, it's right. what Right. Or they made bad choices, or they went down the wrong, or they're uncoachable. A dunghill's a dunghill. A dunghill's a dunghill. And an ungrateful motherfucker's a grateful motherfucker. Right. And, and they can't help it. You know, it, it, there's it, people who, who rob and steal and, 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 and fuck you over. I'm not talking about what people fuck me over, right? I've never been <laughs> fucked over. But they can't help it. Right. Right. They, can't, I, they cannot help it because 
That's the way they were raised. That's the way their, that's their genes. That's their blood. They cannot. The way they were taught. The way they're taught. When you're taught something at five to twelve to eighteen to twenty six years old, nobody can change your mind at thirty one. Nobody. I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I've told the story a thousand times. My daddy, when he went, to, came from Mexico to the United States, he worked as a dishwasher. Right. In Acapulco, at right. a restaurant called Acapulco. Owner of the name, the owner's name was Ray Marshall, rest in peace. So the owner, like my dad, he like, my dad was very talkative and stuff, you know. What, was he a good guy? My dad? <laughs> he was a good guy, I wasn't a good guy. <laughs> so anyway, so um, he asked him, do you have your high school? I go, yeah, I finished my high school here in, in California. He goes, I did my high school in Mexico and I finished one year here. I go, did you go to college? I go, no, I didn't go to college. So I asked my dad. I go, how come? Well, I mean, I just got married and I don't have any money and. You know, it's my second job here in, in California. And so he he pushed him up to a cook's helper right away. And he was working real good. He pushed him up to a cook. Mm -hmm. That old man, Ray Marshall, his boss, not his relative, not his uncle, his boss paid for his college. Right, right. Well, is that was that percentage. My daddy said, you never fucking forget. That's right. Who the fuck helped you out. That's right. And where you came from. And I've always lived by that story. 